From inside, you will see small box, middle box, big box, and cloud. Small box, the layers of these three box, and the cloud, layers of the cloud, is kind of a, the extension of the house. So, you will see many, many, many skies, many blue skies, and the clouds could be the another layers of the house. And within this box, you will feel protected by three layers of the boxes. So, nicely protected. But as you can see in this image, you will feel really, totally openness because you can see skies in various different, ten different directions. So, coexistence of the well-protected feelings and open feelings is interesting. I think that is that coexistence, well-protected and openness, is the fundamental quality of the house. So, that is the innovation to create <coughs> kind of a contradictions or a coexistence of opposite feelings, protected openness together. And that is the uh, part of the innovation. And uh, I like to say such kind of a coexistence of the protected and openness are very similar to the quality of the forest. Because in the forest, you are surrounded by many, many trees, so feelings of the protected you can feel. But at the same time, you will choose any way to walk around openness. To the skies, of course, or to the woods, walking around, it's completely open. So I think the forest is a place of the protectiveness and openness together. So I like to say the forest could be the, the origin of architecture. The forest has no roof, but that not problems. Such kind of a coexistence of the well protected, well open feelings is the beginning of architecture. So I think uh, for me this is a really artificial translation of the forest to architecture. Anyway, you are able to see how this box is empty because this is a box and inside just the trees and the second box is like this. So huge area of the air, huge amount of air are defining slightly your territory in this, in this urban situation. So box is made by concrete but the feelings of the territory is more soft and delicate. That is the magic of architecture. The real materials and the feelings uh, could be different. There is a magic of architecture. And again, nice outside view or a cover garden or a, I don't know how to define, but beautiful. And uh, I was talking about the forest. I made a library last year, so I like to talk about that. <laughs> this is a library, like this. But the beginning is like that. Library is a space for books. So we started from the bookshelves, then create some space for people, growing to be a huge monster of the bookshelves. These bookshelves are the huge nine meter high bookshelves with many many openings, layers. So you will see many many layers, infinite layers of bookshelves within this library. And uh, I like to say I was very very I get a very big influence from Jorge Luis Borges from Argentina, of course. So I'm very happy today to make a presentation in here, Buenos Aires. I have a special feelings in this city. I'm a big fan of Borges. And of course, as you know, the story of the library in Babel, I'm a big fan. So when I get a commission of this library, I like to create such kind of a library. But of course, the geometry of the Borges story is 
more like a honeycomb like this. But I like to translate in my own way in this architecture. So infinite layers, infinite library. But at the same time, of course, the architecture has its own area. So it has a limit, but the experience is infinite. Such kind of things is my style. And in the process of the design, I found two opposite, again, two opposite concepts. Library for library is essential. Both is very essential. One is searchability. That means to find the books, to search the books, or to find the books easily. So usually it is represented by a systematic layer of the, the bookshelves. But another one is storability. This is more like a walking in the forest, and then sometimes you will find a very, very interesting book, that which is not you like to find. It's kind of a nice accident. And then these two concepts are completely opposite. Searchability means very, very ordered space. Storability is more like a forest, more caves, so walking around, unexpected uh, encounter with the books. Then how to combine or mix these kind of opposite aspects together was a big challenge. Then we found this spiral shape could be the answer. If you were standing in the center, and of course the spiral has many, many openings, then you can lay out the books according to the, like, uh, the clock numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is very systematic layout. So if you are here, then you will see quickly which way you have to go. But at the same time, the labyrinth, like spiral shape, is very, very good. The spiral is the ancient geometry of the labyrinth. So if you have no books you like to find, then walking around, you will be easily lost in this spiral labyrinth. So systematic layout and labyrinth layout is in the same geometry. That is a very surprising uh, innovation for us. So we started from here and the spiral could create somehow like the infinite layers of the, the bookshelves, like this drawings. Then you will feel some kind of infinite feelings, even though it has a the physical nature. And I found through this kind of spiral geometry. I could, we could create re-translation of Borges library. And today morning I visited the former the library of uh, Nacionale Argentina in Buenos Aires. It is that they took me to the the room where Borges was sitting. And they took me to the the central space, huge, high bookshelves with the skylights. It was so interesting. I was so surprised, and so impressed by that. That is the, the special moment for me. So I try to create, of course, not so super like the Buenos Aires Library, but I try to create something, something special. Anyway, this is a one. Nine meter high. This is a spiral. So it is like a, yeah, if you like books, this is a book heaven. If you don't like book, this is a terrible book heaven. <laughs> so it depends on you. But anyway, this is a, yeah, library. And I finally finished. Yeah, the spiral is like this, so the bookshelf is coming outside, we cover by glass. So it is, uh, from outside, it is the representation of the library. And we're reflecting the greens, and from inside, the huge openings facing to the north, and another layer of the bookshelves. 
the bridges is a going around like this with skylights. And this skylight is made by polycarbonate, so it impers the natural light, but at the same time, it reflects the bookshelves through the uh, ceiling. So the feeling is there is no ceilings, but there's some kind of cloud is floating about. No limit of the feelings, uh, ceilings. And you will find how it is exciting to strolling around, walking around, through these openings, and through these layers. The many, many, many layers. And you will find how empty these bookshelves. They have many books, but uh, these bookshelves is much more than they have. So in future, I hope they will put one more, one by one. But uh, at the same time, this is a library for art university in Tokyo. And sometimes students or teachers like to make some installations on these uh, bookshelves. Using these bookshelves, many different inspirations is coming. So different installations is coming to this. So I think that kind of uh, interactive the bookshelves could be a very new thing in this 21st century. Not just bookshelves is bookshelves, that is a bookshelf. Books is, bookshelves could be something different, that is a 21st century. You can see the layers and the spiral shape is created in such kind of a vanishing space. Then you will be invited by the by the end of the space, what is happening behind the space? Or you will see many layers of the books and with openings, so you will see some small part that kind of creates expectations to you. What what is happening behind this wall? Or well, something very exciting could be happening behind these walls. That is the excitement of this library. So infinite sequence of the uh, invitations or expectations is happening. Sometimes these kind of things is happening. But I think uh, there is a very nice photo. She is representing how comfortable this place are. And I like this photo very much. And again, and these big numbers is representing the categories of books. So number nine is, I think, the literature or something like that. And the number seven is art. So you will easily find which category of the books are there or there or behind there. Again, the layers. And of course, I'm a designer of this library, so I have to say I know every corner of the library. But every time I visit this library, I have a feeling that I never walked around all the areas or there is some hidden corner I never see. I have a, such a kind of very strange feelings because wall, 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 bookshelves and the behind, behind with small openings. So some kind of a hidden things could be happening. That is the nice expectations of this library. I, every time I feel such a strange, even the designer of the library couldn't understand the whole situations. That is a uh, uh, thing to what I intend. Yeah, and again, the beautiful series of the, the bookshelves. And they knew me. This is the photo I like very much because it is just a reflection. But trees and bookshelves are melting together inside the library. So it is representing how this library is like a forest. Walking around in forest, this is good. But at the same time, it is, yeah, in one picture, the forest and the libraries are coming together. 